This video is designed to accompany the protocol Panel Optimization for High Dimensional Immunophenotyping Assays Using Full Spectrum Flow Cytometry. This is video 5, which follows Supplementary Protocol 3, Heterogeneous Autofluorescence. The second option for autofluorescence is having heterogeneous autofluorescence. This means that there are different cell types in the same sample that have different spectral characteristics of their autofluorescence. Here we have an example of an experiment run using skin tissue, which contains multiple different cell types. Here we're just looking at our unstained sample, and if we get on the bulk of the cells of interest and look at the spectral plot, you can kind of see that it's a jumbled mess of a few different spectral signatures. It's not a nice, clean spectral signature like we saw with our previous PBMC sample. So, if we wanted to remove this autofluorescence, we would struggle if we only used the integrated autofluorescence extraction, as that is only expecting to see a single autofluorescence signature. Instead, we have a longer process, which follows three different steps. These steps are discover, distinguish, and designate. So the first thing we have to do is discover our different autofluorescent spectral signatures that we have in this sample. So we need to open a worksheet template, which has a raw n by n permutations. So this will compare all fluorescent channels against each other in the raw format. So these are single detectors rather than fluorescent dyes in your panel. So we look through all of these plots to check for populations um, that are separated from each other and distinct. And we want to discover the one which has the most distinct populations in it. A nice shortcut that we can use is if we go to a new raw worksheet and just gate on the bulk of our cells of interest and then look at a spectral plot. We can look for regions of heterogeneity such as here in the UV and I know that this panel is also interested in eosinophils, and we expect to see some there. So if you're looking at eosinophils, YG1 is a great place to look. So if we create a new plot, and we take our UV channel somewhere in this region of heterogeneity, and we plot that against our YG1. Then we can see that we have a few different regions of heterogeneity. So we have our very dim autofluorescent section down the bottom left. We have this population over to the right. And we have this population up the top. And we have this population that kind of runs down the middle. So the way it works is that anything on a diagonal line is generally the same spectral signature, just in varying levels of brightness. So we're looking for shifts in only the x-axis or the y-axis to give a different population. So this is looking like it might have four different populations. Now we're moving into the distinguish section of the protocol. So we're going to distinguish what these spectral signatures look like and whether they are actually different at all. So we're going to put gates around these different populations, starting with my dim autofluorescence. Then we'll take my yellow green one high population. We'll take the high in both population. and the yellow-green one low population. And then we want to 
put their scatter properties next to them. And you can see that the different sections in this plot relates to different populations in the scatter profile. So this P3 gate, which was our yellow-green one high, which I mentioned earlier has to do with eosinophils, they're sitting very high up in our scatter profile, which is what we expect for eosinophils. If we put a spectral plot alongside this scatter plot and we only plot this P3 gate that we have created, we can see the high yellow-green signal indicative of eosinophils. So we would call this spectral autofluorescence eosinophil-like. Next we have P4, which seems like a very mixed population of cells. Let's see what the spectral plot looks like. And if we compare these two, we can see that they are actually different spectral signatures. This one has a lower region in the yellow green and has slightly more defined peak in the violets instead of a flat tabletop. So these are indeed individual spectral signatures. Lastly, we have P5, which is more lymphocyte-like looking in its uh, scatter properties. If we look at the spectral signature of this population, We can see, once again, a different spectral signature with a high peak in the UVs and much dimmer peaks throughout the rest of the spectral signature, which is much more indicative of lymphocytes. So we have our three different spectral signatures alongside a dim autofluorescence region, and so we have distinguished three separate spectral signatures that we want to add into our uh, unmixing. So the next thing we need to do is select the peak channel for each one of these um, spectral signatures and export some data. So for our eosinophil-like population, it seems to be that the max is in UV9. So, if I drill down on our P3 population and plot UV9 in a histogram, we can get on the brightest events in this population. Now, what we want to do is make sure we're exporting at least 300 events to have sufficient events for the unmixing wizard. So, oh, 400 should be plenty. No, 500. Now we can export these gated events as an FCS file. And I'm going to call this a Cinephil like. Now we repeat that for our two other populations, as well as our autofluorescent dim population. Once you have exported all your heterogeneous autofluorescent populations, as well as your dim autofluorescent negative, then we need to designate these as autofluorescent tags in the software. So all fluorescent tags um, that are in the SpectroFlow software are found in the library portion, and you can add as many of these as you'd like. When adding autofluorescent tags, we recommend adding a new group so that you always know which ones are autofluorescents and which ones are not. 
So I have my group of autofluorescent tags here and I'm going to add the three that I have just distinguished. And I will designate them here in the software. So first I have my UV7 high uh, lymphocyte like population and this is coming off the UV laser and we just need to know what the uh, max emission wavelength is of that detector. So we just find that from the Aurora user guide and type that in here. Now we add the other two. So I have a UV9 eosinophil-like population. And a V7 max pop population coming off the violet laser. Peaking at 542. Okay, if we come back to the experiment, we now have to add these tags that we've just made into our experiment as if they were fluorochromes that we were going to unmix. So now that I've added them to my library, I can find them here under my autofluorescent tags. So we just add the three that we created. And of course, we need to add them to our reference group as we have just made some single stain controls. And now we need to define an additional negative control for spillover calculation because the populations that we just exported are only positive. We only exported the brightest events in these populations. So to unmix, we of course need a negative. And that's where our dim autofluorescent population comes in. So that's what we put in there. And of course it is cells. And of course we need to designate this negative control for our tags that we just put in. Now we have three new reference controls that we need to add a sample to, which is the populations that we just exported. So here I'm looking for my dim autofluorescence population. So I import that FCS file and I do the same for the rest. Then I go through the unmixing wizard once more. And set the gates for my cells. Once all of our gates are correct, we can then go through and QC our controls to check the similarity of our different autofluorescent populations. Coming to the similarity matrix, we can view our similarity index and see how similar our different um, 
autofluorescent signatures are. So you can see that they are all similar, with the highest similarity being 0 0.92, but that is still underneath the 0 0.98 threshold, so they are indeed individual spectral signatures. So then we go ahead and we live unmix, and you just want to check your n by n's to make sure that your unmixing result has improved through this autofluorescence extraction process.